Hey guys, welcome to another episode here at BringSpark.com. Today I'm joined by someone who I met for the first time, I think back in 2008, on a workshop in Berlin that I was helping out on. And he was teaching there with some of our other guests, like Jamie, James Martin, Johnny Soporno. And um, he had a lot of interesting stuff to say. And as the years gone has gone by, I have gotten to know him better and what he does better and the whole community that he's created, which is an amazing thing. And I really want him to talk to you about that stuff and also about his general philosophies on life and connection and companionship and all these things that he has some insights into that I've never heard from anyone else. So, San, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, San Perion, you run what's called the Ars Amorata, is that right? Yeah, it's uh, Ars Amorata is um, it's the name of the philosophy, I guess, that we've been trying to to understand all these years. Um, years ago, I had Enlightened Seduction. Some of the old school guys remember that. And uh, which morphed into Ars Amorata. And Ars Amorata is fake Latin for the art of love. And uh, uh, yeah, so we've, Ars Amorata is, is the thing that we're doing. And it's the name of the philosophy. I guess it's the name of the business too. It's the name of the whole aspect of things of, uh, of the art of love, the art of seduction, the art of beauty again. That's awesome. And, and I really want to dive into that. But before we get to that, because there's probably a few people who don't know you that well, I think you have a very fascinating personal story about how you got to yeah. where you are and how you, you went through life. So uh, I know you love asking people this question, so I'm going <laughs> to turn it back to you. What's your story? Well, that's a good question. I, uh, I'm from northern Canada and uh, a, a fellow northerner. <laughs> and um, I, I was raised kind of in the forest where uh, well, I was raised in a near a small town, not in a small town, but near a small town, um, very small, like 1,000, 1,200 people or something like that. And I was, I grew up kind of like in the isolated north and, and, and it's still in my blood. I thought I would never leave like the forest and the wilderness. Um, but you know, when I was 19, around that age or so, 18, 19, I kind of emerged virtually from that forest and into the cities of the world, into the, you know, more commonplace thing. And um, with very little education, with zero money, with little prospects. And um, I remember I, was, I struggled. And I liked girls from the very first dot. And... Uh, and so I, uh, but I, because I didn't have a lot, I didn't have a lot of social graces. And so I was kind of an insecure, not kind of, I was a very insecure um, and needy, uh, falling in love, desperate young man. And uh, so I set out one day, not a specific day, but in some, some, something kicked into me at some point where I said, I am going to try and solve this part of my life. I'm going to become a student of women and I'm going to really start to understand the hearts and minds of women. And that was many, many, many years ago. And I've done almost nothing else since those days. I've just been trying to understand women. I mean, like I've had jobs and I've had, uh, you know, play a little bit of guitar and stuff like that, but I've really only, um, gravitated toward the energy of women, the female spirit. And I learned a great deal. And eventually, um, you know, when this whole seduction community came along, I had already been in the trenches, you know, for, for years. And, uh, and so I had a couple things to say and I a answered a few questions and I just got a bit more and more traction. And, and eventually I was written about in Neil Strauss's book, The Game, and um, then, you know, the whole pickup artist community, the seduction community went all commercial and coaching and, you know, websites and, and uh, all this kind of stuff. And, um, and I, was, I was one of the early guys doing this kind of thing. And then, uh, um, so, yeah, and I'm still doing it uh, in a, kind of a different way. Like I'm, I'm I, I spent 10 years writing my book. I guess I can mention that, huh? I spent 10 years writing my book and I published it, as you know, uh, fairly recently. 
Uh, ten years of, I have a copy right here actually. Where is it? Here it is. This is the book. Perfect. And just for uh, reference, where can be, people go to get that book? Yeah, well, it's available on Amazon. And um, you can get it a Kindle version or a print version from Amazon. Um, and it's an Amazon dot, you know, UK and dot DE for Germany and stuff like that. But it's, it's an English book. It hasn't been translated yet. Um, uh, yeah, so you can you can get the book there. And... Um, and it's a it, basically, it's a book that that covers the essence of the Ars and Rotter philosophy, cover to cover. I mean, like it is. It's strange because when I finished that book, like I've been I've been writing and talking and lecturing all over this world to men about women and to women about men. And for years and years and years, I've traveled this world. I was homeless for you know twelve years and traveling, and. Uh, um, the book came out, I published it a year ago and it kind of like took the wind, the wind out of my sails. No, it took the words out of my mouth. It's like, if I do like uh, a talk now, or if I do a, uh, I feel like I'm repeating myself because there's so much that I, 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 I vomited everything out of my system into that book. And so it's everything, it's, everything is there. There's nothing that I wish I would have included in that book, which is strange to me. And uh, so, so my next phase, I'm, I mean, I've been talking a lot here, TJ, but my Go next, my next phase is to start to travel again and talk to people about this. And I'm going to write another book and, but it's not going to be about the same subject. It's going to be about, I don't know what it's going to be about yet, but um, yeah, um, that's what I've been doing all these years. And ours and Rada is the, is the culmination of that. We've got a, uh, a group of guys who have, you know, uh, bought into the Ars and Rada uh, philosophy and, and body of work, and, and, and we call these guys uh, the Amorati, as you know. So, yeah, so uh, that's what I'm doing. That's what I have been, have been doing. That's what I'm going to continue to be doing. That's very cool. And, and you said something that I think is very important, and to me is one of the things that always made you kind of stand out from – a lot of the other guys, especially the guys in the pickup community and, and that stuff is they, you know, they talk about uh, getting good with women or, mm -hmm. or, you know, doing these things or learning how to communicate or whatever. And you talk about studying women. You talk about uh, learning from women mm -hmm. instead of learning how to deal with women. Um, yeah. Could you touch on your, like, what's, what does that mean to you to learn from women? Well, it's an interesting, interesting because there's, it's true. There's, there's an entire... Uh, the way it's set up right now is like there's there's men's groups and men's coaching and men's learning and and they're gathering together as men to have these conversations but it's like us men over here and the women are over there and now let's strategize and figure this all out so that we can launch various assaults onto that camp of women over there um for me i've always said and i've always thought that uh it isn't us and them Never thought that. I mean, like, there's a, there's a, there's an invitation and and uh, um, a, an openness back and forth, be, be, because when I was young, there was a concept, and, and and guys can relate to this, where you would see a guy who has no trouble. Seemingly, he's surrounded by girls. Girls like him. He gets away with stuff that no other mortal can get away with. He's not the tallest. He's not the you know the most good looking. He's not rich at all. He's a, he's, a, he's broke. You know, sleeping on her couch, and and yet women will take care of this guy, and he gets a, a seemingly free pass. It's because it's because he's on the side of women, which is a which is a, a strange concept. But he really, really. I mean, I've been saying for years, TJ, that a man who loves women is loved by women. That's the essence. That's the essence of ours and Murata, which is uh, if you love women and you portray that to the world, women will give you their hearts and minds, their bodies. They take care of you till you're old and dead. And, and as opposed to trying to take something from them and trying to conquer them and trying to win. So, yeah, it's like uh, that is, I think, the, the difference between what we're trying to do and what a lot of the things are out there trying to do, which is how to get a, you know, 
the secrets to get into a women's bed or how to do this or that. Yeah, it seems like a lot of the other guys are trying to get a leg up on women and try right. to you know, uh, get that going for themselves and not for both of them or not for the women. Not They're not looking to share. They're looking to, to get or to receive. Yeah. And to me, that's always been one of the things that, that's annoyed me a lot about a lot of the seduction. Or, mm-hmm. Let me call them pickup coaches because that's what they are. Yeah. Uh, nothing wrong with seduction. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, you said this was, you know, the, a man who's who loves women is loved by women. And that's one of the, the core elements of the R Samurai. Can yeah. you elaborate on like what is the what's what's the point of the community? What's the aim? What's your goal with it? <sighs> to be very frank, um, it's a, a there's a there's a there's guys out there who are completely sincere. They may be misguided, and they may be they may have been hurt, and or, you know, and had trouble in the past with their not family related or whatever, but they're sincere and they want to have a better conversation with women, and they have no message. There's no message for, for, you know, or very little of a message for men, which is a message of still being a scoundrel, still being, uh, you know, masculine uh, without having to, um, you know, sacrifice your, your masculine edge to still be, to still have empathy and respect and collaboration and a great time with women. And there's a whole, I mean, it's one or the other. It's like take back the power from women type of groups, or there's, um, our whole group is a feminist group, which is ridiculous. You know, it's like, you know, uh, men saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I identify as a feminist. Well, what does that mean? Because now you want to take the, the voices of women away too, which is their voice, which is their, their stance and their, 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 um, um, their right to stand up and say, I want to represent uh, women in a feminist role and now men because they're so sensitive and new agey and and whatever are yes and, and i'm a feminist too and i identify with that and and they fall down on the side of sensitive nice guy um enabling ass kissers and so how right? do you balance that how do you get that masculine edge together yeah. with the love of women? That's the great question. And that is the whole essence of, of, of what I've been trying to understand all these years. What I wrote a book about is that. It's the, it's, as I've always said it, and my visual uh, uh, image of it is there's an upper energy and a lower energy that, 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 you know, that emits from the heart of man. And the upper energy is all his charm and respect and humor and, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, sp- speaking nice and opening the door for you and taking your coat and offering you a glass of wine. That's a great upper energy of man. And the lower energy is his desire to bend the, the world over. His dark force, his mystique, his danger, his riding a, a wild stallion, you know, a, along the surf. And the problem with most of the advice for men out there, or the messages for men or the dating advice is how to, you know, do Toastmasters, try stand up comedy, so that you be, so you, you know, how to, you know, talk a lot and not have a lot of dead air and a lot of space and stuff like that. And then you become this upper energy, nice guy, nice, uh, long massage, massage with oils guy, uh, you know, uh, uh, please a woman guy, right? And, and women don't want that. They think they want that, but they, but they don't want this, these soft, um, accommodating men who are all upper energy. And upper energy is a great thing, but it, is, it has to be balanced with the lower energy, which is their spirit of, of, of our masculine desire, our sexual nature. And we hide our sexual nature because we don't want to offend women. And, uh, and it's ridiculous. So the Ars Armada message is a reclamation of both those energies, again, which, which you know, it's those two camps I talked about. And it's a reclamation of it saying, no, we can be powerful and strong and stand on the earth with our two feet without sacrificing our empathy and our, and our love of women and our desire to, for her to have a beautiful experience in life. Absolutely. And, and to me, I, like, I see a lot of that too in men, that the, what you're calling the upper energy, the, the overly politeness yeah. of men that uh, be 
you know, it's it's nice and all, but it's not going to create any tension. It's not going to create no. any of that that you want to have in something that's going to be more than just a friendly conversation. Uh, so how do you work with the, because, you know, like you said, a lot of guys are taught to be this upper energy. They're taught yeah. not only by the suction or pickup coaches, but they're taught by, you know, romantic comedies and whatever else on right. TV that you need to be this guy. How do you work with guys to get them to amplify their lower energy as well and, and find that balance? Well, I think the first thing is the awareness of it. There's, I, I can't tell you how many times I've even mentioned these concepts where there's guys going, uh, that's been my whole life. They, they, you see the light bulb going on in their mind. I mean, we're hiding our light under a bushel. We are, are like you said, all the TV shows, all the, you know, the, the, the media, I mean, media today, I mean, like the whole tone of it is like men are one step away from being rapists. You, you, if, if a man's left to his own devices, he'll rape a woman, right? Uh, or he's a pedophile and all this ridiculousness. And, um, and it's strident, you know, screechy voices all over the place. And, and so men are afraid to, to even show one shred of the masculine edge. We're taught in our school system. We're taught, you know, from all this kind of stuff that you've got to be the sensitive, nice guy. And, um, and in the North, certainly in Scandinavia, where you're from in Canada, where I'm from the United States and England and Germany, all these places that has been so stripped away from the hearts of men, our masculine edge, that we are afraid to look to, to, that we flinch around women, that we are afraid to speak our truth. We have to get up or drink a bunch of beers or get up our nerve and spew some inane line because we're trying to, uh, trying to, to, you know, get past their defenses sort of thing. And there's, and there's some honesty and truth and authenticity that's been lost in men. And because our sexual nature has been given to us by God, it is, it is, it's God given. This is, this is our spirit of who we are. <coughs> and we, 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 since we're little boys, we're, it's stripped away from us. So I think to answer your question, the number one thing is, is for guys to recognize or to, to actually hear about this and realize that we, we're, we're a generation without this sense of masculine direction realize that and then realize that, that it's okay it's okay to be to have a sexual nature that's what's missing from the earth absolutely as long as it's balanced with the upper energy of respect and charm and humor and all these beautiful things obviously yeah yeah so you talk a lot about or I, i've heard you several times talk to um groups of men where the question has been raised where they're you know they're scared or they're nervous they have they don't know how to approach uh not just a girl but anything because of the fear they have and you talk about you know being a champion and, and showing yeah. up basically uh i would love for you to talk a little bit about how to to start showing up in life and, and the yeah. mindset well like anything in life we think we have to have before we we all you hear this all the time before i go traveling i have to save up money before i uh do this first i have to do this i have to do this first in order to do that and we have the same thing with women i have to get my confidence up i have to read a few books i've got to learn some things then i'll be able to go talk to women i have to memorize some things and so i don't run out of things to say and have dead air and and it doesn't work that way it is it the concept of showing up i mean like i woody allen said that 80 percent of success is just showing up one of my favorite quote me too, because it's so, so true. It's like we're waiting to not be nervous. We're waiting to be cool. We're waiting to be interesting. We're waiting to get rid of our, to our, our belly and, and have a six pack before we think we can go talk to girls or to get that nice car or to get that mood lighting in our, in our, in our place and a nice stereo playing. <laughs> we think we have to have all these things and none of it matters. And, um, and showing up, the concept of showing up is, is to just – Put yourself out there with your nervousness, with your, uh, you know, your lack of something to say, and at least show up and say, at least I'm here talking to you because you look nice in your dress, and I wanted to come say that, and I'm going to run out of things to say, and I'm nervous to talk to you. You make me nervous, and that's that's I'm curious about that too. To do that is a very strong masculine thing, and it's all men need to do. I mean, like a smile or a a nod or a a, a wink is all it's ever been 
that's all that's ever been needed for centuries to start something that lasts, you know, start a fire that lasts forever. Absolutely. And yet, yeah, we don't even do those. We just like hide behind our beers and hide with our buddies and 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 hide at home on Friday evening because it's easier. You know, you look around with our headphones on and looking at our phone when we're out. Exactly. The and a lot of uh, you know, you'll hear a lot of coaches and a lot of advice out there that says you know it's our fear of rejection that keeps us small. But you know what? I think it's our fear of success that's that's a big thing too. Which is, what if I go talk to that girl? What if she likes me? What if she wants to see me? Now I have to be, I have to shower now and then. Now I have to stop playing World of Warcraft. Now I have to get out of my, you know what I mean? Right. And, it, and yeah. we complain and we go on internet forums and we talk about how we want girls in our life and we wish we had a girlfriend, but we, no, we don't. It, we want to sit at home in our sweatpants and, and, play, and play computer games all weekend and, 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 and drink Jolt Cola, you know? Right. I often ask people how whatever it is that they're saying that they want in their life that they don't have. Uh, my question is always like, how bad do you really want it? Yeah. Because if you want it bad enough, you would be out there creating it or, or getting it. Uh, so to me, it seems like that that understanding that you were talking about when it came to the high and low energy also applies to this. Once you yeah. understand how this actually works that in itself is going to keep pushing you out there to, to start creating uh, the things that you want. Of course. And so like, instead of waiting for the answers on how to be interesting and cool, put yourself out there as, as the way you are because women are not interesting and cool either. They're broken. And, you know, we'll talk to a girl and, and we're trying to get a conversation going and she's going, we ask her a question. She goes, yeah, mm-hmm, um, no, I don't think so. Um, mm-hmm, no. And we think, we think I'm not interesting enough or I'm not funny enough because I can't get in a conversation. But we never think this which is probably true. We never think she's nervous and doesn't know what to say. And she's like, uh, uh, this guy's talking to me and I don't know what, uh, I didn't brush my teeth and you're right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I talk about that concept all the time because to me it's, it's so fascinating. I believe that the main reason why so many people, men and women have such trouble connecting with each other is because of just simple misunderstandings like that. Yeah. Guys think the girl's, not interesting, uh, interested because she's giving those short answers. And when he walks away feeling rejected, she's left behind also feeling rejected, yeah. thinking, oh, my God, I feel like an idiot. He must have thought I was so boring. So he just, you know, left. And I see this happen exactly. all the time. I talk to my friends about it when I'm out with, with the girls that I hang out with and I see them talk to a guy and it doesn't work out. Nine out of ten times it's because she was really nervous and yeah. she didn't know what to do. And if I go over to the guy, like you said, it's going to be the same story. Uh, she wasn't interested. Exactly. And, and this leads me to, to my next question for you, because I know that, and you mentioned it earlier too, that you don't just talk to guys about girls, but you talk to women about men as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I know the, uh, the um, women seminars or talks that you do are kind of contained in that, that environment. But could you generalize and, and explain what happens yeah. in these talks that you have with women? The difference is if I'm talking to men, I'm talking to my young self. I'm talking to my 19 year old self that came out of the wilderness and was nervous and manipulative and insecure and you know, all these like crazy things. So I can, I can, I can stand in front of a group of men, know what their experience has been, grab them by the lapel and say, it's going to be okay. Like, like let's go into this world. Let's go and find a, let's, let's cast off from the shore. I can, I can do a call to arms or a call to, uh, you know, a, a, a a leadership drive, I guess you could say. And like, let's go. That's who's, because we're going to go. Who's going to come with us? I can say a very strong message to men. With women, I can't do that. I'm not a woman. And it's, it's, uh, I've always found it strange to have, when you have, well, I don't know. It just seems strange to me, but it probably isn't strange. It's just my weird thinking that there are men coaches for women and, and men teaching women how they should be. Now, and I've done, I've done all kinds of uh, talks and experiences for women. But what I always am very careful to recognize and understand all the time is that I'm not a woman. So I can say to men, listen, as a group of men, we're doing this and let's do this. Here's a, here's a greater way of going. I can't say to women, women, you're doing this and you should do this. That to me is like presumptuous and it's like, it's not my place. But I certainly can talk to women about the great, um, the great um, 
qualities of female spirit that make a man pause. And, and we all know this. I mean, every one of your, uh, of the guys that's watching this video can think of a time in their life where they met a girl who is like an angel of, of, from, from the clouds who there was just something about her spirit and the way she moved and the way she smiled and the way her whole, the way she radiated in en energy that they think about that woman still today. They think about that, that girl, they can probably count them on, you know, one hand, the, the amount of girls have really touched their heart like that. And, and so all I do when I talk to women is talk about the qualities of those girls, the generosity and the gratitude and the, and the, of, of the female spirit. And it's what we're missing too. We're missing, just like we're missing the masculine uh, energy on this earth, the masculine, uh, the, the good qualities of the masculine energy. We're missing the good qualities of the female energy too. Right. Because you're not, like me, I believe, a fan of the, I feel like a lot of, of societies geared up that everyone should be equal. And I'm not talking about how much money you make yeah. or, or your rights or whatever. I'm talking about in terms of, let's call it your energy. Uh, men are being increasingly told that you need to be sensitive and you need to yeah. you know, get in touch with your feminine side, which is great as long as it's balanced out with that masculinity, while women are taking more, on more and more masculine roles as a result of this. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the word equal is a great word. The problem is that isn't what we, we call it, the equality movement. It isn't equal at all. It's not, it's not even heading towards equality. It's heading towards sameness homogenization, a blending together of, of there's the loss of polarity of masculine energy and female energy. And, you know, the whole goal of, of equality movement um, was to, to gain equality. And we didn't get it. We got sameness. We'd all blended together and mashed together. And there's no, there's no polarity of the sexes, which is a crime in my mind. It's, um, it's a failing. Uh, equality is a great thing like to take away the you know that women um are held down in a patriarchal society there's nothing wrong with that that's a that's a that's a great noble goal but that, that's not what it's concentrating on it's concentrating on um blending the sexes together which is which is uh a sin in my mind it's ridiculous it's like it's 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 created this generation of men who are afraid and it's created this generation of women who are uh, masculine tinged, masculine strong, and wish they could be soft and 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 be a and, and be a girl again, like she used to be when she was young. Right, because being that doesn't mean that she's you know weak or no. that she doesn't have the same opportunities or, or any of that no. stuff. Right, not at all. No, no, no. And and the problem is like, uh, yeah, it's like men looked around and said, okay, women are getting all this power away from us, and we have to fight against it. And that's a ridiculous thing. And women are saying men have been holding us down for so long that we've got to sit on their side of the table, which is ridiculous as well. Does, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's not equality. That's, that's uh, stomping on each other, I don't know, on, on, on each other's turf, I guess you could say. Right. So you've been traveling the world for a long, long time. You've been in Bucharest for a while now, I know. But before that, like you said, 12 years, was it? Yeah, yeah, 10 years for sure, yeah. What prompted all the traveling? Why not find a place and, and settle in? Eh. Well, I think, um, I don't know this, you know, because I had a corporate job and I had that, you know, apartment and I had the, the furniture and the whole thing like that. And, and I went down that path for a number, long, a lot of years. But you know what? I think it's, this is what it is, TJ. It's like, I was a kid with nothing, with moccasins on my feet and, uh, you know, a knife on my side and sneaking through the forest and fishing and, and you, know, uh, you know, building log cabins and, and, and this kind of stuff. And I was this kid with nothing and sneaking through the forest. And then I went into the world of society and I started to accumulate all the things like, you know, apartment vehicles, um, you know, that sort of thing, thinking that that was a, that was where you have to go. You have to accumulate all these things, get a bigger TV, get a, you know, um, uh, and so I headed down that path and it's not true to my nature. And so, uh, 
yeah, 10 years ago or so, I, I gave all my possessions away and I took off and I lived with a carry on bag only one pair of shoes for years traveling. I lived in, you know, when I say lived, I was like, say two, three months in Montreal, two, three months in Austin, spent some time in Panama, Colombia, South Africa, you, you know, and, and I've traveled a lot and I've, and I've rented apartments in a lot of different places for short times and, and with a carry on bag and you just pick up and go again. And there was something to me that felt, I didn't realize it until writing, you know, the last part of my book, I realized that it's really me returning to that forest and sneaking through the forest again. And with, when I had nothing but a, a little desk to write on and a, a kerosene lamp and, uh, and, and I had nothing else. And, and I've gone back down to having nothing else by choice. And the freedom of it is fantastic. So I traveled until I came to Bucharest. And then Bucharest is such, such, a, such a great energy here. It's a, it's, a, it's a city that's coming to life from what it used to be and returning to what it used to be years and years ago. And it's full of uh, great energy and full of great women. And the, the, the spirit of the women here is just shocking. And I love it. So I kind of, I curtailed my traveling a lot. I stopped traveling as much as I used to because it's not because I don't like to travel. And I went to London last weekend and I went to Germany and Poland a, a, a while ago, but I go overnight. <laughs> I, go, I go overnight. I got to do something there. I go overnight and come back to Bucharest because when I come back here, I'm like, my, my, I, I'm filled with uh, a great energy. So that's perfect. So what's the best thing to you? Like, what, what's the most important thing when it comes to traveling? What sh why should people do it? Oh, I think travel is the, is the best education. I mean, that's a cliche when you hear that. But travel gives you perspective. Travel, like to really like travel by yourself, for instance, and to go places and, and to scare yourself a little bit. Um, or go out of your comfort zone as opposed to going to, you know, Paris and sitting there and uh, well even that's fine but to just really stretch your boundaries uh, and see what you're made out of it's kind of like a vision quest and it's um, travel I think is uh, uh, you get perspective so that when you are talking to a woman for instance or you are returning to your space your city for instance you have a you have different eyes on the world and you have a slower way of looking at the world and a more balanced sense of wisdom because you've seen some things and you and you've you've seen how small the world really is and you talk with a different tone of voice because of it it's just it's a natural automatic thing that happens and i believe i've heard you talk about being a, a renaissance man <laughs> uh which which sounds like me sounds to me like something that that you attribute a lot to traveling, getting out in the world, and having new experiences uh, to feed that side of you that yeah. that always, you know, will always have something new to talk about or something more to talk about. Well, that's true. So so being a Renaissance man or being a, a man with many insights or, or knowledge or, or skills, why is that important? Well, as I've always said, TJ, I mean like. The goal of old age, the only goal of old age should be, should be to have some great stories to tell when you're old and can't do anything else. You can barely get your soup in your mouth. You should at least have some stories that are worth telling as opposed to, I worked at this corporate um, cubicle for 35 years and I got a raise every five years and uh, I worked my way up to a middle manager. Uh, this... I, I, if that's your your the love of your life and that's your dream, that's a beautiful then that's a beautiful story. But to have stories, I mean, like I've always said, if you're faced with two paths in life, two fork a fork in the road, <coughs> two divergent uh, roads, you should always take the one that will give you the best memories. You should always take the one that's going to give you the best stories because when you're old, you won't care that you got a raise at that job or that you got a, a corner office and moved into that. You wouldn't remember those things. You just can remember the, the, the stories you had of the, the, the great and crazy times you had. So um, I'm very much an advocate of that. And travel gives you that. Travel gives you all kinds of memories and stories and say, remember that time? Wow, yeah. I, 
you know, I've always had this notion that if I'm in a plane sometime and the engine's cut out and it's got like six minutes before it hits the ground, uh, well, first of all, I think, well, okay, that sucks. <laughs> but then, <laughs> but then I would think, you know, at least I did that. And at least I did that. And at least I, I sure tried that, you know? Yeah, it's it's the age old question, you know, if you were to die today, would you be happy with the way you, that you've lived your life? Right. And uh, I think that's an important, important one. And as you might know, I love traveling myself and I love going out there and, and yeah. seeing all these things. And to me, one of the most important things is meeting new people, meeting yeah. other cultures, meeting like minded people uh, with different backgrounds and different thoughts and different values and, and all that stuff. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I've always been such a fan of the Ars Emirati, because there's so many different type of people in there, but they all have hmm. this one common goal or, or thing they that, that they're interested in that they're passionate about. So I'd love to return to the Ars Emirati for a minute and talk about uh, the idea of brotherhood. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because I know that a part, a lot of these people who come into this program, they find that, I, I mean, I met a bunch of them just a few weeks ago when I was in Las Vegas mm. uh, for Johnny Soporno's thing. Right. Uh, there were a bunch of them there and, and uh, stayed in the same house and the conversations were so different than what you'll hear, you know, n normal guys yeah. have or, or yeah. just people outside of that. And to a lot of them, they pointed out, because I asked them, you know, what's the most important thing to you about being part of this community? And it seemed like just just the idea of having people around the world that had their backs yeah. and that was interested in that, you know, the, the same types of, of values or, or insights or whatever it was they were searching for. They could always find someone. Yeah. They always have, have the conversation. So yeah. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on creating such a community or a brotherhood and, and why it's important for people to do that. Well, like it, years ago, I, used, I would do a seminar, for instance, and 15 guys would come and you spend a weekend with them and you shake their hand and you get your picture taken and um and then you go your separate ways and then you know two weekends later you do it again and you meet another group of guys and that was the model for a long time what we discovered was that there's a there's a the strongest desire like you said and you discovered that when you asked them the question the strongest desire for guys it's not necessary to learn a bunch of inf information. You can email information to them. They want to sit in the energy of a gathering. And, and like we used to do, we used to gather together around the fire and tell the stories of the day. And we don't do it anymore, especially with the internet. We don't have to. We can do all our communicating and all our, our socializing in our underwear from home. And we've lost the essence of men coming together mentoring each other, uh, um, walking side by side. And it evolved. It, it, we realized that that was what the call was for. The call was not for, like, help us get, figure out women. Uh, the call was for how can, we, how can we stand on the earth with our brothers, on, with a band of brothers that, have a, that, that are, don't want to necessarily talk about, you know, football and various things like that. They want to talk about, they want a different conversation. And the Amirati members, which is also fake Latin, Amirati, um, like you said, there's members all over the world. And, and it is that. It's, um, our focus shifted away from doing seminars and programs to having the gatherings. I mean, right in May, in, in Bucharest here, as you know, uh, in two months from now, we are having a Amirati World Conference which is free for any member of the Amirati to come here. We'll have some speakers. We're going to have some fun and we're going to, you know, invade the city and have a, have a nice time for a weekend. And these are the things that excite me more than anything else. Like to be able to gather with the guys again. And like, and I, I wish I could have been there in Vegas and I didn't make it this year. And uh, to me, it's like the highest goal because it's like we created a club that we, that would, that would finally accept us. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're always right. the ones excluded. We're always the, the nerds and the, the chess players and the dorks and we were always excluded. And now we, we have a club that, that would actually have us as a member and it's a, it's a cool thing. Mm -hmm. That's a very cool thing. Yeah. And it seems to make a, a lot of difference too. How long have you been doing the Arsenal? Through 2000, 2004 or 5? 
2005, yeah. Yeah, so it's been about 10 years. Yeah. And, and just judging from the people that I know are on the, the online groups and the people that I meet, anytime I, it seems like anytime I leave the country to teach somewhere or, or speak somewhere, I run into Amiratis. Yeah. And it seems like you have a vast network of men who are trying not just to improve their own lives, but to improve the general conversation that goes on out there yeah. between men and women and between men and men. And I mean, I, I met one of the guys in Vegas. He'd moved to LA just because he wanted to be in LA to spread the, yeah. these conversations and have more of them. That's cool. So it seems to me like these guys, a lot of them want to actually kind of change the world a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what we get. We don't have guys that are, we don't have a bunch of followers running around. That's for sure. Like we're not gurus and followers. It's not like anything like that at all. Our call to action is a call to accountability and account, a call to stand on the earth. Again, as a leader, a leader uh, in our relationships and a leader in our careers, a leader in life. And so the kind of guys that are drawn to our movement are not guys who are want to pick up chicks or, you know, get a bunch of phone numbers, and get laid a bunch of times. They're guys that want to say, hey, I want to have a better experience in life and I want to lead my life. I want to lead the charge. So, you, so I mean, you know this as well as I do. I've got the, the Amirati A tattooed on my arm and there's at least... 20 other guys that have that A tattooed somewhere in their body or the phrase Ars Amarada. I mean, like, so we've got, we've got guys who said, you know, this is a meaningful thing to me and I want to support and I want to, to spread that message. And, um, to me, it's a, that is the highest, the highest goal is that they can go out to the world and, and, and do likewise and spread. It's a good message. It's a, the Ars Amarada canon, the Ars Amarada a philosophical body of, of work, I think, is is wonderfully well developed in all encompassing, and it took years to get to 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 have that. And for guys to want to go spread it into the world, I think it's a beautiful thing, you know. And Absolutely. yeah, so I, I love it when guys take. I love it when I hear that there's a, for instance, there's a salon. A, we we have these you know free gatherings somewhere in the world called Salon Amarada, and we'll do one in Portugal, or I'll hear about one in 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 Boulder, Colorado, or something that, and I don't. I have nothing to do with it. It's not. It's not a Zan Perion salon. It's an Arsenal Rod salon where the guys are saying, "Hey, I've got something cool to say." And that to me is beautiful to see that kind of like flowing and going. Is a that is very cool. Is a great thing. Yeah. So if you could, uh, you know, it's the the magic wand question. You can wave a magic wand and you can change the way that people interact with each other. What, what would be the most important thing to, for you to change? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. It sounds cliche to you to say authenticity or honesty or <sighs> you know, all my work has been uh has been really to try and learn for myself. All my teaching has been to try and learn for myself as a as that nineteen year old kid. To be able to, to, to take myself aside and say, you know, it's okay. You don't have it all figured out. You don't have all the answers. You don't have the, all the confidence and, you know, and the structures of life that make, make you feel like important in any way. And that's okay. To take myself aside and say, <coughs> it's okay. And I think um, if I could change anything for men, I think that's what I would want them to get, that, it's, that they are okay. It's interesting, TJ, because, you know, in this marketing world, guys say, you know, consultants and stuff, they say, so what's your ideal client? And off the top of my head, my ideal client is a guy, <laughs> right? A guy, who, <laughs> right? A guy who wants to, like, to, to understand his wife or his relationship or his fiance or his girlfriend or wants to meet girls or wants to have a lot of sex with girls, whatever, the guy, right? But I, I, the more I think about it, the ones that I really am drawn to and the ones I really, the, the kind of guys that I really, 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 you know, put my, really want them to get something is the young guys who are starting out like me, you know, and I, we get guys coming through the Ars Amrata programs and come to, you know, Casa Amrata experience and all these various things that are 50 years old or 45 years old. And it's, that's a great 
energy too. And, it, and it's a great conversation with that guy. And it's a great back and forth. And we learn all kinds of things in those, in those experiences too. But this is a guy who's seen some things and he's had three relationships. He's married for 10 years and this kind of stuff. So he's got, uh, he's, he's had some perspective behind him, which is good. And he's looking for, for the, for the new phases going forward. But a guy that's a, just starting out in a clean slate and, and is nervous and doesn't think he's any good for the world and doesn't think that women like him. That to me is like, that was me. And that's, if I could, if I could only speak to that kind of a crowd and, and tell them that it's going to be okay, you got all these years ahead of you, that would be, uh, that'd be kind of cool for me. So that sounds awesome. Yeah. So for people who want to, you know, get into this and I'm not necessarily talking about joining the Amirati, which, you know, I recommend yeah. people do, but I'm, I'm talking about people watching this video and going, you know what, he's got a good few points here. Maybe I should start doing more with my life. Yeah. What would be like the top ideas or, or tips you, you could get, kind of get started and get the process going? I would, I, the first thing I would say is stop doing what you don't love. You know, there's an old uh, thousand year old poem. I can't remember some Persian poet. He said this, you know, before you go to your day, in other words, before you go to work or whatever, uh, take your musical instrument off the wall and play it a little bit. And then go about your day. And if your day doesn't have the music in it that you played that morning, doesn't have that same spirit of the feeling of that music, then don't do it. And I don't mean, you know, save up enough, enough money so that you can stop doing that. Or I mean, stop. Like literally, I'm not kidding. And my message is a strong one. And it's, a, it's one where people say, well, that's not a responsible thing to say. Yeah, I'll say it anyway. Stop doing what you don't love. Stop it today. You know, and, and so that's a, that's a strong thing. Stop what you, what, you, what you don't love and start moving toward experiences and stories. If you, you remember, you're faced with two paths always. There's always one way this way or this way, and this one will give you the best memories. Not the best money, not the best security, not the best your parents say, this is, you better do this, and you want them to be pleased and all that kind of stuff. Stop pleasing people. Fundamentally stop pleasing people. Start to, start to ask what's needed for you because that is the best way you can give back to the people to be your, your, your authentic you know, self. And, and go and find, you know, and, and go to what, Follow your bliss, as Joseph said. Joseph uh, Campbell said. So, yeah, that's perfect. And on that note, I think we're gonna start uh, rounding this up. Uh, where should people go to see more about you, learn okay. about the Amirati and all their stuff? My uh, website is zanperion dot com, and the other website is arzamarata dot com, and. And all our programs are all listed there and you can find out, you can contact us. Um, buy my book. Buy my book, everybody. I've not heard nothing but raving about that book. Everyone's talking about it. <laughs> yeah, and I've given it away a lot. Like not the physical book because it, it cost me money, but the digital book, I've been giving it away a lot of copies to people because, uh, you know, because I want that 19 year old kid in me to be able to have that kind of a message. So, and, uh, yeah, so all those channels, zanperian.com, marsandmar.com, go to Amazon, buy the book. Um, just, you know, and I'm going to get out there and start doing talks. I was just in London last weekend and I did a free talk, which I haven't done in a number of years. And I really thought, wow, this is, to me, it's like to go out there and just shake hands with the guys again and, and check in with them and let, you know, to me, that's what I like to do. So look for me somewhere in, the, on, in some city of the world. Come to Bucharest. If you really want to change in your life, come to Bucharest. Your life will change. I just posted a video on the Amirati Facebook group yeah, that, my, <laughs> that my friend Kelly filmed. Uh, and it was, you know, it was last fall. And he's filming along the street of Bucharest. It's all walking streets in the center here where I live. And every single table was girls. Six girls, eight girls, 12 girls, six girls, five girls, four girls, 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 girls. And he was so shocked. He filmed this. So how is this possible? Yeah, so come to Bucharest like and feel the energy of the, of the great and wonderful women of the city. And of, 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 to me, it's like it's, it's, it's home for me. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. 
thank you very much for being on here. And hopefully we can get you on in the future as well to talk about some okay. more stuff. I know you have plenty of stuff to share. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it was, it was great fun for me. Thank you. Thanks for having me, TJ.